Greetings and peace, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me this uh, morning. So I would like to start this with Bismillah Rahman Rahim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful. Today I have my brother from another mother, Daniel Arola, joining me. And for those that have been following me, I met Brother Daniel when I was associated with Douglas Duane Dietrich. And over time, we severed from that situation. And I'm glad that God put him in my life and me and his, so we were able to learn from each other and also expose this con art <laughs> that we were once involved with. So in this specific episode, I'm going to dedicate it to Daniel Arola fully so he can explain his side of the situation. And for me, uh, I've already ex exposed Douglas to a certain extent. So for my side, please go on the playlist and you'll see the Exposing Douglas, uh, Douglas Dietrich playlist where I have several videos and podcasts exposing him bit by bit. So in this specific episode, I'm going to hand the floor over to Daniel Arola because all of us have been slandered, doxxed, defamed, and abused by this predator. And smear campaigns are ran by predators, not by victims. Because had he not said anything about us, we all would have moved on with our lives peacefully. So without further ado, Aslam alaikum and welcome to Brother Daniel. The floor is yours. Please tell us who you are, how you got involved with Douglas, and the aftermath situation as well. Assalamu uh, alaikum, brother Sal. All right. Um, let's see. Where, 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 where do we begin? My gosh. Oh, yeah. Um, this is around 2015, I believe. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere around that somewhere around that year when... Uh, when I first paid attention to Douglas Dietrich, it was some it was some video um, interview. I believe it was for Halloween with Andrew Bartsy's, and uh, you know he was it, Douglas was saying some really cool history stuff. You know, I mean, I'm into history and all that. I mean, I read um, I read a little bit about different parts of the world and different countries. You know, see how they um. You know, look at different levels of pride from different nationalities, you know, on the on the foundation of their country and all that, that neat stuff. And, uh, you know, my interest in Japan has something to do with it, even though he did use the uh, World War II Japan 1 angle, which, you know, made it uh, distractingly attractive. Although, I you know, I didn't really initially believe that narrative, but... Uh, you know, he offers some some kind of alternative way of viewing history. And, you know, since he was big in geopolitics and all that, it got my interest, but how can I say, I maintained my sense of detachment where, where discernment is concerned. Because it is easy to believe someone who speaks really confidently about himself with what, um, he knows and what information that they're sharing with you. So that is that is an easy um, that is an easy path to follow along just because everybody quote is doing it. So I had to uh, you know keep an eye out. But you know just in case I fall in too deep, even though I still did in some way, because I was protecting my own personal interest as a listener to Douglas's shows where he started talking about um, other people and sabotaging him and them, uh, public, uh, what was that, uh, what is the term for it? The, uh, the he uses himself as a public informant? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. A, a defamation of his character as a public informant. You know, him playing the victim, pretty much. And, um, I was at that, I was at that part where I was, I, I was protective of my interest in what I can learn from this guy that I just, I just voluntarily, um, went along and I started making these videos to troll, you know, and make fun of people that were against him, you know. And, you know, which, you know, which is that part of me that likes to fight, you know. So, and I just went, I just went along with it, went along with them, whatever story he told me, without hearing or reading anything about the other side of the story. So, that is my mistake on my part as a listener of his. So, and, you know, that, that, yeah, 
that would be that would be where I went in too deep, and I stopped doing it. You know, posting those videos um, when Richard Cole called me out on being a fly, acting as a flying monkey for Douglas Dietrich, and uh, I stopped and I go, oh well, he wasn't lying. You know, when when I when I gave myself a second to think about it, I was like, oh shit, he's right. Um, let me look over this shit again. So I started questioning Douglas myself, you know, on certain things. Um, but long before that, I did question him on some things that he did say that he had accomplished or said he did, you know, when he was in the Marines. Like, um, when he, uh, when he intervened in, when he intervened in the, some mass slaughter against, um, uh, these female Muslim students that are being shot as they were running out of a burning dormitory because they didn't have their headscarves on. And these Muslim religious police were there shooting them. And <laughs> Doug was claiming the government attack, two of them killing them with his bare hands, you know, while his platoon were just sitting there just standing by watching until they knocked him out for it. <laughs> I'm thinking, okay, how the hell does this make any sense? You know, I mean, I'm a martial artist. I've been in martial arts for, geez, I don't know, 40 years or so. Anyway, um, there's a lot of stories that I've learned from veterans about killing and, you know, even tapes that uh, I used to see before the internet that, you know, were pretty brutal. And uh, the way he just talked about how he just did it, you know, being emotionally detached about it, you know, like he was reading off of some script, thinking, um, this is bullshit. He ain't killed nobody, him and his skinny ass, you know. So, um, that was, that was my first red flag, you know. And then, so I had to watch out, you know, uh, see if any sign of him cheating his way through. Like, uh, you know, that shit when he, uh, started to adapt the hit, the son of the son of Adolf Hitler um, image, you know, him claiming to be the biological son of Adolf Hitler from some uh, insemination of sperm that his mother had slaved, you know, it's like, okay, like, oh man, this is going too far. Well, anyway, you know, those are, those are like some of those big time red flags thing, and oh, wait a minute, I gotta, I gotta watch who I'm, uh, I gotta watch who I'm aiding and abetting here, you know. So, I mean, okay. yeah, brother Daniel, I mean, uh, you know, before you continue any further, I just wanted to add that anybody with common sense, I mean, unfortunately, at that time, you and I were associated with him. We thought this person was uh, speaking the truth and he was trying to help humanity. Little did we know that we were aiding the enemy of humanity himself. And what he does is he's basically trying to identify enemies of the state so if you're if you ever dealt with like a alphabet agency informant or somebody that's a protected asset like i was aware of this growing up in the post 9 11 world as a muslim american how these individuals entrap other people they bring them into their circle and they attract entrap them so what he does is he attracts followers he brings people in and then he squeezes as much info as he can out of them, of good people, even my, even myself, just donated to, donating to him, helping him, as spreading the word about him, even on my podcast. And it, it comes a time where, wait a minute, he's, he's having an anti-American stance. He's saying America's bad, America's military is this, and all of this other stuff of World War II. So he's basically uh, collecting people that are anti-Americans and identifying enemies of the state for whoever his handlers are and a part of what they do is they entrap people this way so yeah uh, please continue because he's uh, defamed you and i both and he's even doxed me but you know thankfully i i've been able to report him to the authorities on that so please continue yeah that's that's also another thing too one symptom of the buildup of a cult is uh is when the uh, when the person is promoting something that is evil. Now, with this with this other bullshit that he came up with as anti gods, things that eat on. Well, he didn't come up with it himself, you know. But that's besides the point. Um, he's promoting he's promoting the uh, 
the, the evil image, you know, as something for, for his listeners to, uh, hurry, the clock is ticking, you know, the world is ending or whatever bullshit, you know, book of revelation mindset, you know, that, that goes along with it, you know, for them to contribute to him for his, I don't know, 200 electric blanket, I don't know, what the, what the hell is he going to do, make a tent city out of it with the electric blankets? Who knows? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, it's that, yeah, the, the thing, the, the, the twist that he made with the, um, the evil, the, the evil narrative is that he, he turned the anti gods into something that's beyond evil, that is worse than the, the devils and demons of hell, and, uh, you know, that, that, uh, anyone who, you know, who's learned about it from them, you know, some big bullshit's going to happen unless they contribute to him. You know, I mean, it's, it's the same as, you know, being in church, you know, like in an evangelical church, you know, you got that, uh, they're passing the bowl around, you know, you're just dropping your tithes in while they're, while they're guilt, while they're guilt tripping you. You know? Yeah, that's that's pretty much it, Brother Daniel, because when I looked into him and first I caught him when with that vampirology book, the manuscript of that book, he plagiarized off of a Soviet scientist research research report. And then the cover of that book, uh, he claims that it was his mother. But then I found this old picture on Twitter from uh, this Asian cosplay artist, Eugene Fay, And that was the same exact picture, which he claims that that was his mother. And he put that on the cover. So, I mean, he plagiarizes all of his thumbnails and arts from Asian cosplay artists from other countries outside of America. So maybe there's like some kind of a legal protection with that in terms of the copyright. But even the, with the Roswell book, if you look at the beginning of the book, there in fine print, it tells you that this book is a work of fiction. So him and his co-author and the people that he's involved with, they're all scumbags to the highest degree. And they are defaming and doxing people. And I reported him to the authorities in his jurisdiction. I did everything that I possibly could and reported him even to Google and YouTube. And, uh, I mean, even the doxing attempt, the person that came to my house. Yet, this person is still up on the air, which shows me where, that he's a protected intelligence asset, COINTEL Pro agent informant, where he's there to entrap people, identify enemies of the state, and spill this anti-American narrative while living in America at the same time. So, so it's like the Proud Boys leader, right? He was there rallying people against the state and the government, but he turned out to be an agent informant as well. So this is a discernment and warning to people because Brother Daniel and I, like what Daniel was doing, he was making these videos for him and doing what he was doing to help him. I was donating to him, helping him, appearing on his show every Wednesday and Sunday, and, uh, I mean, it's, at the end, he throws everyone under the bus, so this is a warning to people to, you know, stay away from him. You know, um, I was still cautious, you know, when I, when I first became a listener of his, especially when I, you know, developed the connection with him, exchanging messages, I knew better than to, um, share personal information, because uh, it's likely going to be used against you in one way or another, especially when you don't really know who the hell this cat is. Anyway, um, so yeah, I just um, I just told him that I had some girlfriend. I made up some image about you know, her, about my girlfriend, quote, you know, just just to give him a, I don't know, just just to just to give him a bone to chew on, you know, just to, to, to see how far he can use that. And I do recall the first time uh, I appeared as a guest on his show when he was uh, on Revolution Radio. Uh, that afternoon, I texted and messaged him and Laurie Solomon when she when she used to be his handler. Um, I texted them both, letting him know that uh, do not mention that the fact that I have a girlfriend on air. You know, just just keep it cool like that. They had the nerve to question me about it. Like, why not? They're like, I'm just protecting your personal interest, you know. I want to keep that shit off the air, you know, especially when I'm associated with you, you know. So, I, I, um, I, so with that in mind, 
I observed the way that he talked about other people that, you know, that was also connected with him. He didn't always, he isn't always really positive. He always has some shit to say about them, you know, one way or another, you know, until they're on air. And then he's, you know, telling them they love him and say hugs and all this other crap, you know, just to love bomb them, to make them feel, oh, everything's okay now. <laughs> but yeah, he, he does that shit all the time. Yeah, that's definitely right. And that that's what, I mean, that's how I caught him because... I believe it was one of the one of the episodes where uh, as soon as I had gotten off the air, like as soon as you get off the air, like he'll start like talking about you. So yep. this person is not a, a, a what do you call a friend or a uh, brother in arms. If you're looking for the truth movement, even his monologues, he subscribed to these different newsletters and um, research journals and news reports. And he's reading off of them like in a monotone voice. So. He's plagiarizing all of his stuff from other people. And even the, the anti-gods and the Chochoa and all of that stuff, it's all from H.P. Lovecraft mythos. Yep. I even had a person from California who was part of the H.P. Lovecraft mythos community reach out to me and confirm all of these things for me, that him and his co-author and all these other people talking about the Cho and this and this and that, he's plagiarized all of that from these H.P. Uh, Lovecraft, from Hunter x Hunter, from these different comics and animes that people are not aware of. It, all of his images are plagiarized from Asian cosplay artists. I mean, his books are false in fiction. So this person is like uh, the definition of an informant, where he's enticing people, entrapping people, squeezing personal info out of them, and then use, using that against them, doxing, slandering, and defaming people. He's done that to so many people. And for him to still to be on air and not to be held liable, I mean, it's all self-explanatory for those that have common sense. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But yeah, he's a, he, he, he likes to talk a big talk about, I love you, I love this. You know, there's a lot of love bombing. And people like that, they know on paper what love is, but I don't think they actually experience it as a whole. Because people like that, they care more about your loyalty and your love. But they will use, they will say that. They will love bomb the shit out of you for your loyalty. You know, and yeah. that, that's what, and a, a lot, that, that also, that also is what, Keeps people, some people insecure about themselves because you know they're they're, they're feeding off of, they're feeding off of someone else who um, appears to have a stronger self esteem than uh, the other person, and uh, that love bombing just maintains it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. That that's why he always targets like mi mi uh, middle aged white women to come into his circle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and what do you think of, uh, I, I want your response to him calling you a prison bitch in one of his uh, recent podcasts when he was uh, defaming and slandering you as well. Well, see, that, see what, what he did, I was prepared for that already because um, I withheld my own personal life from him. You know, I let him know what, you know, I want him to know. I told him some shit. I even... I even made up some shit, you know, asking him for prayers because uh, my girlfriend, quote, is, uh, have, is in the hospital. You know, I, I don't know, I think, so. I think I said some shit like an aneurysm or a stroke, somewhere, somewhere close to that, <laughs> you know, yeah, just to see his response, you know, he was, and, you know, he, he just responded regularly, you know, and it's like, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll have prayers or whatever, loves and hugs, um, I don't, I don't, remember the message ver verbatim I could look it up but that'll just take seconds but I'm not going to go there anyway I gave him that as something else to chew on and he did use that against me you know after after I broke away from him he was saying stuff like yeah and his, his girlfriend's got like some health problems I don't think she's going to be doing so well you know trying to predict my own doom you know Using that kind, of, using that 
using those dog biscuits of information that I fed him and let him chew on it so that he can, you know, predict my own doom, but he's just talking about his own story, you know? Yeah, I mean, pretty much. I mean, look at this person that's accusing other people of heinous crimes and accusations, right? Along with this co-author that's kind of joined them in this charade. And these people themselves are guilty of all of that that they're projecting on others. I mean, he's talking about going to an estate and drinking the blood of underage young boys and uh, being, in, being involved in this crazy stuff and just uh, purchasing uh, his son off the street, his uh, imaginary son and his sugar daddy and all of that nonsense. <laughs> so all of that stuff he's accusing others of, he himself is guilty of that. I mean, that's... And then the smear campaigns... And talking about people constantly, even people who never even responded to him, they just moved on with their lives. And the smear yeah. campaigns is something that what predators do. And it's very, very unfortunate. But I think God had a reason. You and I came together and we exposed this character to all of the world. So future people are aware of him and they save themselves from this uh, liar, informant, chaos magician and all of that that this guy is. And uh, please, Brother Daniel, continue if there's anything that you uh, have not addressed or if I have failed to ask you anything. Oh, yes, I do want to address something, especially in case um, that other knucklehead is listening right now. <laughs> I want to... Um, uh, I want to ask for forgiveness from Stephen Atrium and Richard K. Cole for the videos that I had posted to make fun of those two. I don't know you guys. You know, I was only protecting my own interests at that time. And that was me being a dumb flying monkey, just as you had pointed out, Richard Cole. And you're right there. So that experience was me, um, was me calling out, be getting called out on my own bullshit and me calling myself out on my own bullshit, you know, with in my relation to him at the time. So, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and, that's, you know, that's, a, that's absolutely right. And even myself, um, you know, I, I publicly apologize to Richard K. Cole as well because uh, Douglas on air used to call him Dickie Cunt Cole and I used to join along with that charade thinking that it was funny. So, my apologies to Richard Cole, and I encourage everyone to check out his blog as he debunks all of Douglas's claim step by step with all of this stuff. And his blog is rkcole.blogspot.com, and they also have an LGAP forum where they debunk them episode by episode. And I, I thank those guys at LGAP because that's where I was able to catch those specific links and episodes and timestamps where he was making dangerous accusations against myself, against Daniel Arola, against uh, our, our other friends that we were once associated with. So I thank those guys for keeping a track record without me having to listen to Douglas ever again where I can continue to see what he's doing. I really don't have any beef against Douglas or even Stephen Outram and Richard Cole when I was trolling them. Although I do feel a little bit bad about the fat jokes that I made about Steve Outram. So I have to uh, point that out and acknowledge it. That wasn't cool. So yeah, sorry about that, Steve. Anyway, um, other than that, uh, I do feel a little, I do feel a bit blessed because of my deliberate the emotional detachment, you know, with my connection with him, you know, although I was attached to him in other ways, emotion on an emotional level and a financial level, I wasn't there. So yeah, oh yeah, that's also the other thing too. <laughs> uh, he he was pissed at me because of because of the uh, OBS program that some new OBS program that I wasn't willing to purchase at the time when I was. When I was producing for him, Alistair in the middle of contemplating on dropping out from producing for him because, you know, he makes his shit so stressful. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I just made up some shit saying, nah, my lady's not going to let me do that, man. Nah, man. You know, so I, I guess that's, that's where the prison bitch thing came from. 
because <laughs> yeah, I, I saw some bullshit saying, "Nah, man, my lady's not gonna let me do that." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember, and he he was like, "Oh, don't you have a sugar mama to help you pay for that?" And he's he's always looking for like a female sponsor, and he always like throws them under the bus, and he's done that to several women. To that one woman, without mentioning her name, when he told her on air, "I love you so much," and she just said, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, no, he said, that, no, he's a he smart said, one. He said, I love you very much. <laughs> With an uncomfortable laugh. Yep, that's it. That's it. I mean, it, he's a predator. I mean, he's he, he entraps these women. He um, uh, po possibly blackmails them. I mean, um, I do, I, I'm baffled, Brother Daniel, that myself and other people, countless people, have made. Uh, reports uh, to law enforcement against him with evidence but why which brings me back to that same revelation that he's a protected intelligence asset and informant assigned to do what we have already explained here <laughs> yeah his poverty protects him <laughs> yeah that too that too i mean uh, yep. and his electric blanket city Yep, the electric blankets, being on <laughs> Section 8, Meals on Wheels, and then pretending to be a triad while sitting at home, jacking off to uh, porn all day. And then what he does is, like, he's jacking off while everyone else is on air, and he unmutes his, uh, himself right at that specific time. Oh, I just came back just to hear what you were saying. But he was there the whole time, just jacking off. Yeah, I remember some of that shit. I'm thinking, dude, you need to mute yourself now. What the hell is that noise coming from there? <laughs> you know? man come on man <laughs> yeah I, I you know i it's it it feels like you know all of us were violated when we were speaking on the air about like good spiritual things and you had this pervert and this uh, informant and criminal in the back just jacking off and at home just plagiarizing from others jacking off and pretending to be a tong gangster so i mean there's that yeah, no kidding. Yeah, it, that's also the other thing too. You don't talk about being in a, or a part of a syndicate. You know, if you're if you're in one, you know, you just don't tell people that shit. You know, exactly. and, and if you do, you, you that that's your way of asserting some some sense of authority to the person listening to you, so they should believe you. You know. And uh, that, that's, that's just bullshit, you know I mean? That, that falls in the same order as him claiming to be the biological son of Adolf Hitler. And, uh, you know, before that, he used to be a Native American. You know? <laughs> I, I remember the Native Americans just ignored him like, yo, who is this freak? And then he knew that that charade wasn't going to work. So now he's using the, uh, the aspect of the Hitler element. Yeah, I remember he also, remember he... he also claimed some some familiar connection to actress Marlena Dietrich. Yeah, that's just right. That's right. The last he's, been, he's been talking about her recently on his latest shows, and uh, also that claim while he was a mercenary in Africa, he met Obama's brother, and in Nicaragua, <laughs> he was um, uh, having intercourse with these underage women and girls, and their parents would say, hey, please, please take my daughter to America for a better life. I mean... Seriously, all of this stuff. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, he. I mean, that that's that that's spinning it all right. It is, brother. It is. Um, I'm thankful uh, that you and I were able to get away from that, and I hope this video serves as um, as an education and as a warning to people who are with Douglas D. Trick at the moment, and. Uh, you know, I'm telling you guys, no matter how good it seems, one day he will turn on you and he will throw you under the bus. And please get away from him and do not share anything about you or your family with him. Yeah. Now, if there is, there, if there is one thing that I am willing to share with people that are involved with him right now is be very careful about the per the personal information that you share with him because... You know, if he hates you, he's mad at you, he'll use it against you. He'll even go as far as calling the police and filing a false report, you know, just like what happened to Solomon and uh, J-Mo. 
you know? Yeah, that's he, right. What, what he, he, he did us was uh, he, he called, like, the elderly agencies in our respective states, in Pennsylvania and in New York, and he said, uh, he was saying that we were abusing our parents and we were taking their money. And the guy that came to my house, he interviewed me and my parents and he was laughing himself like, hey, this is false. None of this is true. I even gave him a copy of the police report I made against Douglas with my local police. And I sent that over to San Francisco. And it's been a year since that incident and everything's been OK. But still. I'm always prepared because these kind of criminals don't know when to give up or leave people alone. The same with Jameson Reese. The same thing happened to him. And I do not understand why the FBI is not uh, going after him because this person is committing crimes across state lines and harming people in other states. And there was another person, a female uh, associate of his, that was also reported on. And CPS came to their house and... You know, thank God everything went okay with her, but she was at danger of even having her kids ta kids taken away from her. So this this is scary stuff. I mean, uh, unless he he's an, a protected informant, an asset, I do not understand why law enforcement is not taking action against him. Yeah, actually, I have a quote, something that he said live on air on the date of July thirteenth, twenty twenty two. See, this is after we broke away from him. He said, because I give them so much leeway, people often open up to me. And so, I do find out all about them, and if they do betray me, then I feel quite free to share it with the rest of the world. Everything that they shared. You know? Exactly. Exactly. That's, that's, mm -hmm. that's what it is. I mean, in times like this, people are, don't already trust each other. And this son of a bitch is already adding more fuel to the fire where people think that, oh, he's he, he's my friend. He's a confidant. And, you know, he always claims that people always reach out to him like assets reach out to him to help him and sabotage him. But in reality, what he does is he messages his listeners and then eventually he gets them on Skype. And that's how he lures them into that circle. So he's the one doing that, too. Mm hmm. Yep. I mean, I think I've addressed it to a pretty certain extent. Um, and Brother Daniel, if you have any closing thoughts, please uh, share with the audience. I never have to pay for sex. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> yeah, also, uh, uh, just a closing thought. <laughs> for, for, people, for people that are sending him money for electric blankets and rent and Marine Corps <laughs> life insurance... And all that bullshit. First of all, he's in a Section 8 home, which was passed down to him from his parents, where he's been living in the same place since the 1980s. And he's got all of the, the, the welfare benefits in terms of the meals, the cell phone, the insurance, and all of the other stuff. He doesn't have to pay for Marine Corps life insurance because he never made it past boot camp. And you can go on Richard K. Cole's blog spot and see his dis uh, discharge papers, which are there where he washed out of boot camp and he never made it. So all of this other stuff, it's, it's, it's all just bullshit. He's just using that money to feed his drug habits and feeding his uh, a sex habit. So there, there's that. And, yep, it's exactly what it is. These kind of people eventually will be the architects of their own destruction. And, unfortunately, his co-author has joined him in this charade. None of these people are using their real names and identities. And they're using these occult defamation and slander and character assassination tactics. And, you know, I don't know. Keep my life. Exactly. And, and, and his own wife left him, you know, once she got what she needed from him. So car karma catches up to all of these criminals. Yeah, this, yeah this, this is also another form of toxic masculinity on the far left side. I wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Um, his co-host is a... Is a is is a conservative while he's on the other while Doug is on the other end of the, um, the political spectrum. So Doug himself can be so far left that you know he ends up being just as far right as his co-host at times. Yeah, that's right. That's absolutely right. And another thing about his co-host and his uh, co-author is why is a guy in his seventies 
going to high school football games and hanging out with black teenagers that are underage and he's hanging out with them he even brought one of them onto the show and he, he takes them out to the movies and stuff so i mean again i'm not implying anything here but but he, he, douglas and his co-author what they're accusing others of i believe they, they themselves are guilty of it co-author you mean ghost writer yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right that's right yeah, in fact, yeah, but that reminds me when we had that OBS program to uh, to uh, to to stream shows with when when I was producing for him, it was you know, it was it was me, Paul Edward, Rose Dio also. You know, we were talking about how it operates, and uh, that was themselves like, man, I do not want to have anything to do with it. I don't want to know anything about it. I want Charlie to do it. I mean, oh shit! So that was that. There was a a red flag, you know. Thinking, oh shit, he's gonna make us do some shit, you know, and he doesn't know anything about it. He's gonna depend on us, and he's gonna put us on the spot to keep, you know, to stay on board with him. Ah uh, shit, I don't think I'm gonna stay on for long as a producer, you know. So yeah, that's exactly. what I kept to myself. <laughs> that's absolutely right, and um, you know, the people, the people that walked away from his circle and. And for years, he continuously slandered and doxxed and defamed and character assassinated these people. And they never responded to him. They never talked about him again. But I think it gets to a point where somebody has to take a stand, where this person is continuously abusing humanity and hurting innocent people. Something's got to give. I mean, uh, and that's where I, I believe you and I and Richard K. Cole and J-Mo uh, came in and... Um, Hopefully, we will get some justice out of this in the end as things fall in place accordingly. But yeah, we all have to stay alert because this kind of person can try anything. I'm always on alert. I already informed my local authorities and um, I filed the, the necessary paperwork. So I'm okay in that regard, but still, I'm always on alert. I see, I see a sense of justice as a form of process. You know, and that and that first step has to do with us detaching ourselves from that level of exi of existence. Yeah. You know, because he was basically scratching at the bottom, you know, like a catfish. You know, and and we were and we were down there with him. You know, where he where where he feels dominant. You know? Yeah, exactly. Then, you know, I mean, I yeah. mean, look 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 at the losers that came on after us. I mean, it's it's never been the same for him in terms of his views and subscribers. Yep. And they're all in pursuit of the truth so that they can, uh, I don't know, gain some kind of cloud over it. <laughs> yeah. No, but see, the, 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 things like this, it turns out to, it, it ends up being just one big ego trap because you're part of a group here that can monopolize some information because you're ahead of them, or you feel like you're ahead of them, you know, and, and, and it's like, okay, and in the end, what do you gain out of it? You know, you're still talking shit about rich people, or whatever, and you're still broke, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right, and you know, it's funny, he's always talking about Aquino, and Aquino came on the, uh, the air, too, even on YouTube, and said, oh, I never know this person, I never met him. And he said, my lawyers did an asset check on him. This person doesn't have anything. So what is there to really go after? And when I uh, consulted with uh, some law firms in San Francisco myself, I mean, when they do an asset check on a person, if the person doesn't have anything, I mean, no lawyer takes those kind of cases like defamation cases, unless it's like a really high public uh, profile figure. Right. So. See, a lot of the guys in this occult American community, Aquino validates their existence. So they could say anything about Aquino and boom, their story is validated and they could be uh, part of the truth community. And he doesn't even he hasn't even met these guys and he doesn't even know them. And he said that so while he was while he was alive. And now Douglas is claiming that Aquino returned to life and all of this other fantasy that's been going through his head. Yep. That's pretty much it. I mean, it's it's just um, it's just the uh, what is it? It's a it's a whirlpool into nothing. Yeah, that's right. That's right.
So Which we just right. stranded on Edom Island. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And all, all of that stuff he's, he's stolen from H.P. Lovecraft. Yeah, um, but Paul Edward, he can also confirm all that too, because at the time when uh, he and I were co-producing for Douglas, he had access to his Google folder, you know, all his prep material, you know, all the material that, you know, I guess he reads and goes through, all the uh, art stuff that he claimed was, you know, like illustration photo of him and his, quote, son. You know all that. You know, he, and you know he said he confirms it's all just just blatant plagiarism. It's none of it is his work. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And for those that are listening to this right now, um, if you go on my playlist, there's a video at the Exposing Douglas Dietrich playlist on my channel. There's a video in there called Douglas Dietrich Pla plagiarizes art from Asian cosplay artist. And you'll see whether it's the Vampirology book where he claims that that's, that's his mother or like these other uh, uh, artists like Carmen Lowe, Eugene Fay, And I, I show it step by step where he's taking this stuff from. So, uh, I mean, Paul Edward confirms the same thing, that he takes his monologues from these different newsletters and um, news networks and the art. He takes it from the Asian cosplay artist. Uh, the Cho stuff and the Edom and the Anti Gods. He takes that from H.P. Lovecraft, Hunter X Hunter, different animes. Uh, the same with the Night of the Broken Circle incident. I mean, it's it's all there for those that have common sense to piece it all together. Yep. And yeah, uh, I believe until the next episode, this should be good enough. And Brother Daniel Arola will come again in the future. And uh, with, with, with the closing thoughts, I would say that he has my permission to download and upload this video wherever he wishes. And on my channel, it will be uploaded on the first week of September. I thank you all and my love and blessings for Brother Daniel and all those that have supported us uh, in this time of great change and trial and tribulation. Assalamu alaikum and peace be with all of you. Thank you. I do look forward to the follow-ups. Yes, sir. Part two mm -hmm. is coming. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs>